Hello guys. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about the family-wise error rate, the Bonferroni correction, the false discovery rate, and the benjamini hochberg uh, procedure to controlling the false discovery rate. So what is the problem? The problem is when you want to conduct multiple hypothesis testing. So let's say you have some hypothesis that says something, and you're considering rejecting that something. With an alpha of 0 0.05, which is the probability of making a type one error, which is rejecting the null hypothesis when actually the null hypothesis is correct, then let's say we test 100 hypotheses. We expect just by the definition of alpha yeah, that we reject five of those by pure chance. Yeah? So, so the question is, is it something that you uh, accept or not? Yeah? It could be that you say, yeah, you know, I'm okay with having five discoveries that are actually wrong. And it could be that you say, no, no, I, I have to, it has to be that my discovery is not wrong because I want science to advance and not to spread misinformation. Okay, so one solution is the Bonferroni correction, which is very strict. So if we're testing 100 hypotheses, we divide the alpha to be the original alpha divided by the number of hypotheses that we are te testing. So in this case, it would be 0 0.05 divided by 100. And what this does, it ensures that the family-wise error rate, so the error rate over all of the family of hypotheses that we are testing, all the 100 hypotheses, will be less than 0 0.05, okay? It will be below the alpha, not alpha star, okay? So this is basically the probability of making one or more uh, type one errors over the entire 100 hypothesis that we are checking. Yeah, and how can we sh show this? Then for example, suppose that there are M hypothesis uh, with P1 to PM P values. And in reality, we have M0, which is less than M that are um, correct, that the null uh, hypothesis is correct. Then what happens when we use Bonferroni? Well, when we use Bonferroni, then the family-wise error rate, which is just the probability for each of those hypotheses that are actually the null is correct, yeah, we denote the indices of all of these as I M zero, then that we will actually reject them. Yeah, we will reject them using the uh, Bonferroni correction. Okay, so it's the union of all of these events. And by Boolean equality, yeah, the probability of a union is always less or equal than the sum of the pro different probabilities. Okay, and so it's less or equal than the sum of the individual probabilities. And since the, we are talking here about uh, H null, so under H null, the p-values are uniformly distributed. So the probability of pi to be less or equal to alpha divided by m is just alpha divided by m. And so if we sum this all up, we get m0 at alpha divided by m. And this is less or equal than m divided by m times alpha, which is alpha. So we control the family-wise error rate by uh, a level of alpha. I will put this in parentheses, yeah. This is uh, the proof for why the p-values are actually uniformly distributed, yeah? So let's say that uh, t, some test statistics, it has some distribution. And what is the p-value? Well, the p-value, um, let's uh, suppose we are talking about one-sided test which is a, a, a right side test. Yeah, we only care of getting more extreme values from the statistic that we got, yeah? So what is the, prop the p-value is the probability under the null hypothesis to get a t larger than the value that we actually got, yeah? So it's one minus the uh, CDF of t at the value t, okay? So we can denote by large p, the one minus f of t as a random variable before we know the value of t. And by little p, the actual realization or the value. Once we know the value of t, once we have the value of our statistics, then the uh, little p is one minus f t of t. And we want to know what is the CDF of large p of the random variable. So the CDF of large p, P's uh, denoted fp little p, 
is the probability that big P is less or equal than small p or little p. And this is the probability that one minus F of T is less or equal than little p. And rearranging, we get it's the probability of F of T to be larger or equal than one minus P. Yeah? And well, the probability of being of a random variable being greater than some uh, quantity is one minus the probability of that random variable being less than that quantity. Uh, so we get this. And well, f of t, we know what f of t is. f of t is uh, also uniform. Yeah. Um, uh, if you take the CDF of a random variable, it distributes also uniformly. So uh, in the case of a uniform distribution, uh, the probability of a uniform variable being below some value is just that value. So it's 1 minus 1 minus p, and we get p. So we got that the CDF of large p at the value p is just, e is just equal to this little p, which means this is also a CDF of a uniform, which means that p values are indeed uh, uniformly distributed. And yeah, we can also prove, yeah, let's denote it by two uh, parentheses, that the uh, CDF of, uh, of a CDF uh, is also a uniform. So let's suppose we take the CDF of some uh, random variable. The random variable does not have to be uniform. It can be normal, it can be anything. Yeah, and we look at the, the CDF of it. So it's also a random variable. It's a function of a random variable. So it's also a random variable. And we see what is the probability that it's below some value little f. Okay, so what we can do is we can take the quantile function. The quantile function is actually the inverse of the uh, CDF. Yeah, so we can take it on both sides. Um, and so what we get here, we'll get the original random variable x, and here we'll get q of uh, little f. But this thing over here is just the CDF of x at the point qf. So it's f q of little f and f and q are inverse functions. So they cancel out and we again get little f. So again, we get that the CDF of any uh, random variable is also uniformly distributed. Okay, this was all sidetracking, but the important thing is to remember is that the family wise error rate, if you use Bonferroni correction, then you manage to control the FWER with uh, the alpha before the correction. Yeah, so our alpha is 0 0.05. If we change the new alpha to be 0 0.05 divided by 100, we control the FWER by 0 0.05. And what it means is it means that from a 100 hypothesis, the chance of even making one mistake to accept one is still uh, 0 0.05. So we don't expect now to make five mistakes out of 100. We actually expect to make we actually don't even expect to make one mistake because the probability of even making one mistake is less than 0 0.05. Okay, so yeah, here I show you if you take some test statistic and you uh, take the p-values and you uh, make a histogram, you see that indeed it looks more or less uniform. And I will show it again in code. 